today most of us are here with smiles on our faces. There are a lot of things that we are thankful for. There are so many things that, that bring a smile on our face. But there are also some of us here, even though we have a smile on our face, we have a heaviness in our heart. We have a burden or a pain in our heart. And sometimes we come to church very ritualistically. We come to church because to some of us, Sunday morning means church. So we are here. To some of us, we don't really, we come here and we worship, but we don't really fully know the God that we are worshipping. Sometimes we have been maybe Christians our whole life, but we feel very unnoticed, we feel very unseen, or we feel very unheard. So we come here because it's the right thing to do. We can check it off our list. We came to church today. Maybe we might receive something. But we carry a lot of hopelessness. And today I want to talk to you about a story of complete hopelessness. A story though that has complete hopelessness also reveals who Jesus is. This is a very well-known story in the Bible and maybe some of you are hearing it for the very first time. But I, it is found in the book of John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Uh, we are going to go through the whole story but I'm going to narrate most of the story in my own words. So if you have your Bibles you can follow along with me or go home and read uh, the whole chapter. So it's John chapter 11. And in this story we find a, na a man named Lazarus. Lazarus had two sisters, Martha and Mary. Right? So we see this family of Lazarus, Martha and Mary. They were actually very close to Jesus. They had a really good relationship with Jesus. Actually in the Bible, in this passage itself, it says, when they talk to Jesus, they say, Lazarus, the one that you love. And we see that in this story, Lazarus is very sick. So immediately they send for Jesus to tell, the sisters send for Jesus to tell them, tell him that their brother was sick. And I want to take you through a few points just to break this story up so that you can understand what is happening. And that my first point is the promise. So in the passage we see the promise. If we look at John 11.4, it says, When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. So just to tell you again, Lazarus is very sick. They send word for Jesus. Lazarus is sick. You have to come and see our brother. You have to come and heal our brother. And Jesus' response is, this sickness will not end in death. This is the promise that Jesus gave. Mind you, Jesus is very calm in this situation. Actually, if you continue reading on, it says he waited two more days and then he left for Judea. So Jesus is giving a promise of an outcome of this whole situation. He proclaims this promise. He doesn't panic. He doesn't get scared. He waits for two days because Jesus knew who his father was. Jesus knew that this promise would be fulfilled. See, sometimes we also have promises in our life and we start off with so much of hope. Maybe somebody, maybe we come to church and we hear a message of encouragement. We hear someone comes and speaks over our life. Someone says, this will happen in your life. God showed me this. And we are so excited. We got a promise. It helped us. But then you know what happens? We wait and we wait and we wait. And we don't see this promise coming to life. I thought when I get the promise, the next day I'll see it happen. But so we start wavering in our faith, wondering, where is God? If, I had, if he gave me this hope, then why do I have to wait? So this moves me to the next part of the story, which is the reality. So Jesus gives a promise, but now we're going to look at the reality uh, I want us to look at John chapter 11, verses 11 to 14. After he had said this, he went on to tell, him, tell them, 
Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going, to, I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. Okay, let's recap again. In the first point, in verse 4, Jesus gives a promise. And he says, this will not end in death, right? And now we look, as we continue on, in verse 14, Lazarus is dead. So see, the reality of the situation when Jesus declared a promise, he didn't actually base it on what was going on. Because rightfully, we should think, Jesus should first go and see Lazarus, see what is happening, see the health condition, see whether he'll actually make it, will he have the treatment, the resources to get through it, right? Then make a promise, then declare what you want to declare. But don't just declare things without knowing the actual situation. See, I always think of that's how we are. As soon as we get a promise, we're like, wait, 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 wait. You don't know all the facts. First, understand the situation before you declare God's word to me. First, understand what I am going through before you tell me what is supposed to happen. Because if Jesus went and saw Lazarus and he saw how sick he was and he saw how difficult he was finding it, maybe he wouldn't have said, this will not end in death. Maybe he would have made a smarter choice. Maybe he would have thought a little bit before he spoke. But you see, Jesus didn't need to know what the situation was. Jesus didn't need to know what the fact was. Jesus knew who his father was. Jesus knew that his father had come and given authority to speak life. And so Jesus, without already knowing that Lazarus is dead, said, this will not end in death. So you see, for us, him dying, although it may seem like the end to us, it wasn't the end. I want to go to the third part of this story. The third part of this story is the cry. The cry. So we see the promise, then we see the reality, and now we are here and we're seeing the cry. Actually, in this story, Jesus encounters different, uh, encounter, has different encounters with tears. Jesus has different encounters with tears. And today I want to look at the three encounters that he had with tears. The first one is Martha. So uh, when Martha hears that Jesus is on his way coming to see Lazarus, she runs to Jesus. She doesn't wait for Jesus to come where she is. She runs to Jesus. And then we see in verses 21 and 22. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would have not died, not have died. But I have that um, even now God will give you whatever you ask. Lord, if you had been here, what is Martha saying? Lord, you're too late. Lord, there is no point coming now. You were supposed to come when he was sick, not when he's been four days dead. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. You see, you could have healed him when he still had breath in his lungs. You could have done the impossible but in a possible way. But then she also adds, I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. So you see, Martha is in complete hopelessness of her brother's death. She thinks there is no turning back. Jesus is four days late to this situation. When they asked for him to come, he should have come. Because they knew. They had weighed the facts. They knew what was happening. They knew what Jesus was capable of. They knew who God was. Right? And so it's like, we know, you, we know you can heal him. We know that's not impossible for you. But you should have come according to our timeline. You can't come four days later and expect something to change here. Lord, if you had been here. 
But you see, even with complete hopelessness in her heart, she still recognizes the authority and the power Jesus has, that God has given him. So then the scripture goes on to show a conversation that Jesus and Martha have, right? And Jesus says, you know what, your brother is going to rise again. And he's like, yeah, yeah, he'll rise again on the day of resurrection. We know all of that, right? How good are we with our scriptures? We know exactly what the Bible says, whether we believe it or not. Yeah, it's going to happen. We know. And then he's, he goes on to say, no, I am the resurrection and the life. Right? She's talking here about the future. Yes, one day we will meet him. We'll go all on the resurrection day. And he's like, no, Martha, I'm not talking about the future. I'm here now. I am the resurrection and the life. You see, Martha knew who God was. She knew what God is capable of. She knew God's power and authority. But she hasn't fully grasped who Jesus is and why Jesus came into the world. Jesus was sent to this world as a Messiah. And when he was sent to this world as a Messiah, he came as fully God. Fully God, not God's son representing God or speaking on behalf of God. He came as fully God. And Jesus' response to Martha is saying, Martha, I'm here as God in this situation. I'm here as God over this situation. Yes, your brother has been dead four days, but I am the resurrection and the life. I am the Messiah. I am here to save you. This takes us to our second encounter, Jesus' second encounter with tears. He has with tears. And we look at Mary. Mary, Martha's sister, hasn't come to meet Jesus. And immediately when... Uh, when this conversation happens with Jesus and Martha, Jesus says, where is Mary? So Martha runs to Mary and says, come, come, the teacher has come. Come, Mary, come, Jesus is here. And then we see in verses 32 and 33, it says, When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Okay, so we have Martha and Mary. If you remember, the question, the statement Martha made was, Lord, if you had been here, my, my brother would have not died. Right? And what was Jesus' response? I am fully God. I'm here on earth as fully God. I am the resurrection, I am the life. Then we have Mary. Mary, the sister, says the exact same words. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But Jesus' response to Mary is completely different to his response to Martha. Because you see, when Jesus came to the earth, he came as fully God but he also came as fully man. And today, he, and on that day, he told Mary, he showed Mary that he's here as fully man. It says that he was moved when he saw her. His spirit was deeply moved and troubled when he saw her weeping. You see, Jesus understood the pain. Jesus felt the pain that they felt. Jesus gave a promise. Jesus knew what the outcome was going to be. Jesus knew what his purpose was. But still his heart was full of pain. And so often, sometimes we can accept God as, and Jesus as fully God. They're up there. They know they have the power. But they don't understand. They don't understand what we're going through. They have the power, yes but they don't have the heart to understand the pain of this situation. They don't understand the hopelessness of this situation. So Jesus' response was he was deeply moved. He's showing, no, I feel that pain. I feel the pain of the loss. And he asked Mary and Martha to show him 
where Lazarus was raised. And then you have the third encounter that Jesus has with tears. And that is that in verse 35 it says, Jesus wept. Jesus saw Lazarus and Jesus wept. It's the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. But it still has so much of power. Because Jesus felt the pain of this loss too. He felt the loss of his brother Lazarus. You know, he came into the situation knowing the outcome. So I would think if, if I put myself in Jesus' shoes, right, I come into this situation, I know that what is going to happen in the end, I have already declared it, right, and all these people are crying and all these people are hopeless and they have no hope and they don't know what is going to happen. And in my mind, I'm thinking, wait till they see what happens. They don't even know why they're crying. They don't even know who I am, right? I would be, Jesus would have been excited that they were going to see the power of God. But in the Bible, it says Jesus wept. And why did Jesus weep? Because Jesus wants you to know that he feels that pain. He feels that pain. There is hope, yes. He has given us promises and they will be fulfilled, yes. But he also understands the pain of the situation. He also understands how hurt and broken we feel when something we thought different didn't happen. So then we look at the final point. So we went through the promise. We went to the reality. We saw cries of three people. And then we see the fulfillment. So let's read verses 39 to 44. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad order, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said, this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with uh, strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. So you see, the story starts with a promise and it ends with the fulfillment of that promise. And here we have Martha, right? She's like, don't open the grave. It stinks, right? They probably, they didn't have embalming and things like that. They just put the body in a tomb and they close it. And it's like, it stinks. Don't, don't open the grave. He's been dead four days. What are you even trying to do? But you see that what Jesus declared, no matter how hopeless, no matter how impossible it seemed, it came to, fulfill, to fulfillment. You see, he immediately points it back to God. He says, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Friends, I want to tell you this, that we have got many promises in our life and sometimes our faith is wavering. We're like, God, where are you? Why do you give us hope and then just leave us hanging? God, why can't you answer this situation the way that we see, the way that we want it? You see, because we have things that need to happen in a certain way. We have it all planned out in a certain way. Mary and Martha knew their brother was sick, he was really sick, but when Jesus comes into that situation, the brother will be healed. But Mary and Martha didn't think when my brother is dead, he's going to be raised back to life. You see, because we put our faith in Jesus, we put our faith in God, when it seems like possible, when it seems like there's still a little bit of control. But the moment we lose complete control of the situation, the moment we feel like we don't have the strength anymore, 
then we don't put our faith in God anymore. Because our faith was based on what we knew, what we can control, but not really on who God is. Not really on what Jesus came into this world for. I don't know what situations you are going through. I don't know what comes to mind when you think of a promise not fulfilled in your life. But I want you to know that although we deem certain things dead, although things don't happen the way that we pray for them to happen, or the way we want them to happen, or in the timing that we want it to happen, it doesn't mean that those promises are not going to be fulfilled. I'm going to invite the worship team to join on stage. And I just want you to think of who Jesus is. Like I told you, Martha knew who God was. Martha knew the power and authority of God. But she didn't really grasp who Jesus is. She didn't really grasp the fact that Jesus came into this world to speak life. That Jesus came into this world to defeat death, to give us victory so that we are not held down by bad decisions or failures or things that never came to pass. He came, us, came to give us life beyond. And sometimes we are walking around with our head held down because we are not seeing things come into pass. We are not seeing the power. We are not experiencing this. And we are so frustrated. We are so tired. But today Jesus came not just to give you a promise, but to be with you in the reality of your situation, to be with you, to cry with you when it gets hard, and to also see the fulfillment of it. At this time, if you can bow your heads where you are, whatever burden you are carrying, whatever that is weighing you down, whatever, where, wherever you have lost a sense of hope, like God isn't going to come through. He's too late. He's too late already. It stinks. God is reminding you, no, I haven't forgotten that promise. I haven't forgotten the purpose that I put in your life. Today I'm here to breathe life into your situations. And I want you to know that it's not the way that we expect it. But it's according to His will and His way.